if I were to ask you to tell me which one was a butterfly or which one was a moth, could you tell me the difference? Well, in this video of Why About Nature, I'm going to show you the differences and the similarities of these two creatures, so stay tuned. Hey, what's going on everyone? My name is Carson, and if you have not checked out my channel yet before, we are a channel about promoting wildlife, animals, and conservation. So do me a favor and hit that subscribe button, and also like this video if you enjoy it, and also share with someone who you think would like this content. Now in this video, I'm gonna obviously show you the differences between a butterfly and a moth. So for most species of butterflies and moths, they are very similar in size, shape, and just overall appearance in general. But what are really the true differences between that of a butterfly and that of a moth? Well, the first difference to know is that a butterfly, like this one right here, is a diurnal species, which means it is most active during the day. And our moth over here comes out at night, which is called nocturnal, most active at night. And also, looking at these two insects right here, you can tell that one of them has more bright colors and the other one has more dull colors. And in butterflies, they can be all different kinds of colors. They could be blue, red, purple, black, orange, just about any color you can think of. And most of this has to do with a lot of their diet. Take the modern butterfly, for example. As its larvae state, or in other words, its caterpillar, it feasts on the plant known as milkweed. And milkweed is very toxic. When the butterfly turns into its adult form, which we know is a butterfly, it still feasts on the plant called milkweed. And it's still very poisonous, which makes its body toxic to any potential predators. So that red coloration in the butterfly's wings is a warning sign to any potential predators to say, stay away from me, don't eat me because I'm poisonous. Moths, however, do not feast particularly on poisonous plants. They like to feast on other insects or even cotton. So they're more dull colors, mainly for camouflage. You may see them on the side of houses, trees, any other type of wood or anything like that just out at night to really escape bats or even other bugs. And also with both species, you'll notice that they have really long antennas coming out of their heads. This enables them to be able to feel the vibrations of the wind and also to be able to hear. And with the butterfly, you can see that it has very slender antennae with a single bulb at the end of them. But a moth, however, lacks that bulb at the end of their antennae and instead have really tiny hairs running all the way through its antennae. So when you look at a butterfly, when it's resting on a leaf, or flower or anything like that, you'll notice that they have two different poses that they do when they're resting. The first pose you may see when they're drinking nectar or anything from the flower, their wings are usually pointed upwards. And then, a, and then also they have another pose if they're resting, they're out, similar spread to how this one is, how this butterfly is. They go in this pose mostly when they're actually trying to soak up the sun to regain strength especially if they've been flying for long distances or, or if it's a really hot day and they're just basking in the sun. But moths, however, they're always in this position. They don't flap their wings continuously even while they're resting. They're always in this position mainly to stay motionless so that they can be hidden from different predators for the utilization of camouflage. Now, a similarity between both butterflies and moths is they go through a process called metamorphosis. And metamorphosis is the stage of the entire insect's life. They go from the egg, then the larvae, which in this, these cases is known as the caterpillar, and then they go to the pupae stage, within the butterfly's case is the chrysalis, and with the moth's case, it's the cocoon. And then they both eventually submerge from the pupae stage to the adult stage where they end up living the rest of their lives. Well, that's just a brief rundown of the differences and similarities between two very common creatures that are otherwise mistaken by pretty easily. And also, if you have not yet checked out the channel, be sure to like, share, and subscribe to be able to support 
and also to get some good content. So as always, I'm Carson. Keep watching my content, and we will see you in the next video. So long, guys.